In this video, we're going to talk about Terminal Services Remote App. Now, this is a cool feature of Terminal Services that allows you to run applications remotely from a web page or an MSI file or an RDP file. Now, we're going to see how we can install applications for use within Terminal Services because it's not always exactly the same as we'd normally expect to install an application on regular Windows. There are a few differences there. So, what we're going to do is we're going to see how we can install Microsoft Office because Microsoft Office is something that a lot of you guys listening to this are going to want to do within your own Terminal Services environments. Now, before we get stuck into actually installing any applications on our Terminal Server, though, there are a couple of home truths that we need to consider before we think about installing anything. If you haven't worked with Terminal Services and installed applications on a Terminal Server before, then you need to understand that for some software, we don't typically install applications in the same way that we would on a normal Windows operating system. You see, in a typical Windows machine, we'd double click on a setup file, we'd run through a quick next, next type wizard, and that'd be pretty much it. The application would be installed and it would be ready to run. So let's get started and take a look at how we'll do it on a terminal server. So here we are now, I'm on our terminal services machine, a server that we built in an earlier video, but at this point, we're actually yet to configure anything on this machine. Now, when you install older, let's call them non-terminal services aware applications, you first need to tell terminal services that you want to install the application. Now, we'll need to do that by changing into a mode called the terminal services install mode. Now, there's a couple of ways we can do that. The first is go and open up a command prompt and we're going to type in change user slash install and we'll hit enter there. And it tells us here that our user session is now ready to install applications. Now, if we type in change user slash query, we'll be able to see which mode that we're in. Now, obviously, we're in install mode right now because we just set it that way. So now that we're in this install mode, we're able to go and double click on our setup files and install the programs as we normally would. Now, once our program is installed, we'll then need to change back to another mode called execute mode and that's the mode that our terminal server will normally be in the mode that we'll use to run our applications so to change back we type in change user execute and we can see that we're now back in our normal execute mode well that's one way of installing an application the other is to click on start we'll open up our control panel and then this icon right here install application on terminal server so we'll hit enter there and that simply starts up this quick wizard where what we'll do is we'll click next and we'll need to point to the location where we have our application that we want to install and then just follow the prompts. Now using this tool does have one added advantage is that it's automatically going to change from execute mode to install mode and then once the application's installed it's going to automatically change back to execute mode. So in case you forget to change back it'll do it for you. Now, on the other hand, if the application that you want to install is packaged in an MSI file, then you don't need to change into install mode because the MSI file will do that automatically. You just need to launch it as you normally would any MSI file. All right, well, let's see how we can bring out the big guns on this machine. I'm going to install Office 2010, the latest version of Microsoft Office. Now, thankfully, it's also one of the easiest products to install because Microsoft, well, Quite frankly, they expect that you're going to be installing it. And as such, it's fully supported in a terminal services environment. So I've just dropped my Microsoft Office 2010 DVD in the drive. And the first thing it asks is for our product key. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to enter in my product key and then click continue. All right, now we'll need to read and accept the Microsoft software license terms. I'm going to check this box to accept these agreements and we'll click continue. All right, now here I could choose to customize this installation as well if I like. That's really not necessary here. I'm going to make this quick and painless by clicking install now. And as you might expect, installing Microsoft Office is going to take a while. So I'll save you the trouble of sitting here by utilizing my pause button. And we're going to be back once all of this is complete. Okay, we're back. Microsoft Office 2010 has now been installed. I'm not going to bother going online here. We're just going to click close. Great. So we've installed our first application on our terminal server. So let's go and take a look at terminal services itself to see what options we have 
for working with our applications. So I'm going to go and open up our server manager and we'll expand roles, then we'll expand terminal services. Now the first option we have here is the one that we'll be using when we configure our applications and that's the TS Remote App Manager. So when we select that in the middle here, it's pretty easy to get initially blown away by all of these confusing options in the middle. We've got a whole bunch of different exclamation marks, we've got some warnings, we've got an error here, and it really looks like things are quite a bit of a mess. Well, not really. These things here, they're just pointing out some of the things that we need to configure. So let's take a quick look at what we have here. Now, underneath our terminal server settings heading, we're told here that clients will connect to this server, TS1, and our users can only start listed remote app applications that obviously are listed here in this window. Okay, fine. For our gateway, our clients will use the TS gateway settings defined by group policy. Currently, we're not going to be using digital certificates for this terminal server. And at this stage, we're not using any custom RDP settings. Now, over on the right here, we're told that our TS Web Access Computers group is currently empty and remote app programs might be unavailable to our users. We're also told that our remote app programs list is empty and we don't seem to have a remote desktop connection for this server visible in TS Web Access. Now, a final option down the bottom here is to choose from some of these distribution options for our remote app programs. Wow, that seems like there's a lot of stuff that we still need to do here. And, and yeah, there are some things that we do need to do. The first of which is to actually make an application available. You see, although we just installed Microsoft Office 2010 just a moment ago, that just installed the application. It didn't do anything towards making those Office applications available via terminal services. To do that, we need to add in an application as a remote app application. So let's do that. Over on the right hand side here under this actions pane, our very first option is to add remote app programs. Well, that's what we want to do. So we'll give that a click. Now this starts up our remote app wizard as you probably expected it would. And as it says, before you run this wizard, just ensure that you need to be logged on as an administrator for the server that's going to host this remote app program which of course is this one. And we need to make sure that the host is running at least Windows Server 2008. Well, we can check both boxes there. I am using an administrator account and this is definitely Windows Server 2008. So we're gonna click next. And right off the bat, our first task is to select the program or programs that we'd like to add to our remote app programs list. Now you might wonder why I've suddenly got this big long list of applications when I only just got off installing Microsoft Office. Well, this list includes applications that are already installed on this server, so it's going to be showing other tools and utilities that come in built with Windows Server 2008, including things like the Windows Calculator right at the top there, the Disk Defragmenter, we've got the IIS console, and so forth. So let's go and add a couple of these in here. Obviously, we just installed Office, so let's go with, say, Excel. And let's also install a couple of, let's go PowerPoint and Word. Now, before I go ahead and click Next though, what we can do is we can take one of these programs here, we just select it, so I've got Word selected here, and click the Properties button, because that's gonna open up a new window here for this application. So for this application, which of course is Word, we can set the top the name of the application, its location on our system, so it's on our system drive, which is my C drive, in a folder called Program Files, Microsoft Office, you know the drill. The alias here is a unique identifier that simply defaults to the name of the executable for the application. In this case, of course, it's WinWord. Also, right here in the middle, this is an important checkbox where if we check this, and it will be checked by default, as you can see, we can make this application available through TS Web Access. So we'll be able to launch it from a web page, and we'll see that in a moment. Now, remaining options here are we can throw in some command line arguments for applications that require them. And of course, if we choose, we could also change the icon that's associated with this application as well. All right, well, in most cases, we're not gonna need to sway from these defaults. So I'm gonna click cancel here. And we've got our three applications selected, Excel, PowerPoint, and Word. We'll click next. And we'll get a summary of the three applications that we've chosen to add as remote app programs. Of course, Excel, PowerPoint, and Word. That's great. We'll click Finish. 
and fantastic right down the bottom we had an empty table we've now got these three office applications listed and up the top here you'll note this has changed here to say all remote app programs are now visible in TS web access now right at this point we're now able to log on and use these applications via TS web access in fact let's go and see them in action I'm going to switch over to a client machine I've got in my lab here which is a Windows 7 machine and we'll see how we can fire up these applications. Okay, so I've just switched over to our Windows 7 machine, and now that we're here, let's go and fire up Internet Explorer. And I am going to navigate to the name of my TS Web Access page, which is going to default to the name of our terminal server, in my case, TS1 slash TS, and we'll hit enter. And since I'm logged on here using an administrator account, we're straight in and immediately you'll see our three applications that we've added as remote apps. Now, we can go ahead and click on any of these apps here and it'll load up that application. But do know that we will still be asked for our credentials. And in a moment, I'll show you how to avoid this if you like. Let's just open up Word. All right, well, let's click Connect. And of course, there you go. It's asked us for our credentials here. So I'm going to enter in my password and click OK. All right, and Word is about to load. Now, because this obviously is a new installation of Word, there's a couple of housekeeping things I'm going to need to do. The first of which, of course, is to activate this online. But I'm going to skip this step here because I'm not really interested in activating this software right now. So what I have, once we get rid of these pop-ups here is Word. It looks and it feels like it's running on my local machine when in fact this is really just a bunch of graphics on my screen. This is Word running on my terminal server. All of the processing, the number crunching, that's being handled on the terminal server and just the graphics and the keystrokes are being sent back and forth to my machine. All right, well, that was pretty easy. But rather than go and close down our TS Web Access page, since we've got it here, let's take a look at what else we can do from within this web page. Well, we've got these three buttons at the top here, Remote App Programs, which is what we're seeing right now, Remote Desktop, and Configuration. So let's take a look at Remote Desktop. And from here, we're able to connect to other terminal servers from this screen. So we could just enter in the computer name. I'll go with TS1. And then select the size of the desktop that we want. And let's just go with a smaller 800 by 600 here. And we can hit connect. However, we do have this options button. Let's take a look at that. And when we click this, this is going to expand out this bit down the bottom. And it's going to show us most of the options that we'd normally expect to see with the remote desktop connection tool on Windows. So we could use our local printers, our hard drives, our serial ports, the Windows clipboard, and as well as any plug and play devices we might have. Now we can also choose to bring the sound of the terminal server, any sounds that are playing on that, over to this machine, keyboard shortcuts, and we have performance options. Really nothing that we all probably haven't seen before. So let's go and click Connect. And I'll need to enter in my username and password. So let's do that. We'll click OK. And here we go. Here's our remote connection to our terminal server. So our users can log in and view the desktop on our server and access all of the applications in that way. All right, well, let's close this down. And we'll look at our final option here, which is configuration, which really just lets us select what terminal server we want to connect to. Now, you'll notice here that it says local host. This simply means that the applications and the web access components are all on the same server. Now, we can change this to point to a different server since it's possible that you might run into a situation where you've got your remote apps on one terminal server and the TS web access components on a different server. Now, in cases like this, without a tiny bit of additional configuration, your users won't be able to access their applications. So if that's the situation that you're in, you've got TS web access on one server, your remote apps on another server, what you'll then need to do is add the computer account to the TS Web Access Security Group on the terminal server. Let's see how we can do that. So I've quickly switched back to our terminal server right here called TS1. 
And let's say that we've got TS Web Access installed on a server called TS2, and we've separated these roles. Now, if that were the case, then we'd need to click Start, and we'd right-click on Computer and choose Manage. Then we'd expand Configuration, Local Users and Groups, and we'd select Groups. Now over here in the right hand side, or the middle of our console rather, we've got this group right at the bottom here, TS Web Access Computers. So let's double click on that group and we'll choose Add. Now we'll choose the Object Types button because computers are not normally included in our results by default when we search for objects. So we'll click that box there, we'll click OK. And now we can search for the name of the computer, the name of our Web Access server that is, click OK and add that in here. All right, now if we cancel this and let's go back to our console, you'll notice here on the right it says here that the TS Web Access Computers group is empty. Well, that's exactly what it's referring to. Now obviously in a situation like mine where I've got one server that's fulfilling all of the roles, we don't need to worry about adding in our computer account. But when you separate those roles out, then that's something that you'll need to do. Okay, so back on our Windows 7 machine, this is Web Access, accessing our applications from this web page. Very cool, very easy to configure as you've seen, and I doubt that any users you have are going to have trouble understanding how to run these applications. After all, if they can access a web page, then they can run the applications. Easy. So let's go back to our terminal server, and let's see what other ways we have to get these applications out to our users. This TS Web Access, it's only one of several options that we have at our disposal to ensure that our users can get access to these remote app applications. Now that we're back on our terminal server, let's direct our attention to this other distribution options section here, because you'll notice that underneath this, the two options we have, they're grayed out, and that's because in order to ungrade these to be able to select them, we'll first need to select one of the applications that we want to be distributed. So from this table below our remote app programs table, let's select one of these. Let's go with the first one, Excel. When we select that, these two options here now become available where we can now create an RDP file and a Windows installer package. Before I do either of these though, there are a couple of ways we can distribute these files we create to our users. In fact, if we click on this hyperlink here, more about distribution options, it's going to throw up this help file here and list out the options that we have. So we can put our programs on the web using TS Web Access. Been there, done that. We can give our users an RDP file to double click on and that'll directly launch the application that we want them to have. Or we can have the application appear on their desktop or their start menu by giving them a MSI file, a Windows installer MSI file, and then we can distribute that file using some sort of third party program like SMS or System Center Configuration Manager or even Group Policy. Now we could also just give them the application via a file share. And finally, we can also associate a particular file extension with a remote app program. For example, we could use the .xls extension with Excel, and when a user attempts to open an XLS file, it'll then go and open up Excel. Now the truth is that really a few of these options have always been there with group policy anyway. The main difference is that instead of distributing these applications via group policy and then installing them locally on your user's workstations, we could have these applications point to the terminal server. So we've got a variety of options to choose from here. So let's close this help file. And with Excel selected down the bottom, let's go with the first option to create an RDP file. Now when we select that, that's going to start up a new wizard, the remote app wizard. Let's click next. Okay, well the default up here is to put our packaged applications we create in this folder, Program Files, Packaged Programs. Look, that's fine for my lab here, but if you want your regular users to be able to access these folders, it'd be better to go and create a shared folder somewhere on your network. Okay, well this application is going to live on this server, TS1. It will require server authentication, and communication will take place on port 3389, which is all standard. 
Okay, well our gateway settings are going to be automatic. Now we probably won't change this and we're gonna talk about gateways in another video and we can use certificates as well if we like. All right, well let's go with those defaults. We'll click next. There's our summary, we'll click finish. And there's our RDP file. All right, well, before we go ahead and try this file, let's go back to our remote app management console. And we'll go ahead and create an MSI file as well. As before, this starts up the wizard. We'll click next there. We've got all the same options we had before, the same location, terminal server settings, etc. We're gonna click next. All right, now, with this MSI file, where do we want the shortcuts to be placed? Do we want them on our desktop? or on our start menu in a particular folder. Well, obviously the default here is to put our icons into a start menu folder called remote programs. Obviously you can change that if you like. And also down the bottom here, we've got this option to associate client extensions for this program with the application. But you should only really do this if there isn't a local version of this application already installed on the target machine. Now, since my Windows 7 machine we're gonna use it doesn't have Office installed. It doesn't have Excel installed already. So I'm going to check this box. We'll click Next, and then we'll click Finish. Right, so now we've got an MSI file and an RDP file, which we're able to use on our client to connect to our server. How you now get these files to your client, that's ultimately up to you. You can use a third-party software distribution product like SMS or System Center. You can use group policy. You can simply dump these on a file share and have the users run them themselves. Whatever you choose, they're now available for the users to use. All right, well, I've just switched back to our Windows 7 desktop and I'm going to just minimize this. So we'll open up a copy of Windows Explorer. And let's go and navigate to that folder and we'll test our remote apps that way. So that folder is on my machine called TS1. And this is of course why it's a lot easier to use a network share in program files, package programs, and there's the two files. All right, well, let's double click on the RDP file first. We'll click connect. Now it's gonna ask us for our credentials. There you go, let's type in my password. We'll hit enter, I think I typed that password in correctly. We can see up here that it is starting Excel, well, there's the splash screen, and there's Excel, launched directly from that RDP file. Pretty easy. All right, well, let's close this, and let's run the MSI file. Now, this is gonna start configuring Microsoft Excel 2010 for this machine, and it's gonna do everything behind the scenes, everything it needs to do behind the scenes, so we're not gonna get any confirmation after this dialog box here or this window disappears. In fact, there you go, it's gone. And because I did choose not to display a desktop icon, obviously at this point I'm none of the wiser if this actually even got installed. So to verify this, in my case, I'll need to click Start and go to my Start Menu All Programs. Okay, we've got this new folder here, Remote Programs, and inside there's Excel. So let's run it. We're gonna do the same thing again, enter in our password. And there you go, Excel has run from our start menu just as if it were installed locally. Now one more thing, let's just click cancel here on this activation screen and I'm gonna write something here on my spreadsheet. Let's just say test. And I'm going to click save. And I'm gonna to choose to save this on my Windows 7 machine here. Users, administrator, desktop, and I'm gonna give it a name, I'm just gonna call it My Spreadsheet, My SS, we'll click Save. All right, now let's go and close Excel. And you'll note here that on my desktop now, I've got this Excel spreadsheet that we just saved. And of course, if I double click on that file, it's then gonna to proceed to load up Excel via our terminal server, of course, because we chose to associate the XLS file extension with our MSI file, and that of course points to Excel. So this is pretty powerful stuff right here, and you've seen how to launch applications from a web page. We can launch them from an RDP file, and also from an MSI file. And well, let's face it, each of these has been pretty easy to configure. So I've just switched back to our terminal server, our TS1 server, and let's go back to our remote app management console. And in the middle of this console here, I did say I'd come back to this section. 
The fact is though, that in every section here where it shows this blue change link, clicking change is gonna take you to the exact same window, just to different tabs, depending on what you clicked. So whether we click change here, change here, 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 or over there, it's gonna simply open up this same window. So let's take a look at these tabs real quick and most of the options in here, you're gonna easily recognize anyway. So on the tab that we're on right now, the terminal server tab, we're able to set the name of this terminal server, the port, and whether or not these applications require authentication or not. Now, if you wanna show a remote desktop connection inside TS Web Access, we can check this box to make that happen. And that's what this is referring to over here. Finally, down the bottom here, we are not gonna allow our users to start any applications that we haven't listed on the initial connection. All right, well, our next tab, TS Gateway, we're gonna talk about in another video. Digital signature, obviously lets us use digital certificates. Now we can also create custom RDP settings as well if we want to, and these sorts of settings you'll find by opening up an RDP file. Let's have a look at this one here. Let's just open this up with, click Browse, and let's type in Notepad. We're gonna open it up with Notepad, okay. All right, so these type of settings that we're talking about here, you can enter in those types of fields in this area. And finally, we can set up some of the common RDP settings and you're gonna instantly recognize these settings anyway. Now in this video, we've talked about Terminal Services Remote App. It's pretty easy as you've seen to just grab your favorite applications, install them on a terminal server, and then package them for your users. And of course, we've got several ways of getting these applications out to our users. We can use a web page that's pretty simple to use and it's accessible from anywhere. We can distribute an RDP file to our users or even deploy an MSI file right to their machine. So there's a solution for everyone and whatever your taste is, Microsoft has made it pretty easy to get started with terminal services. So we hope you've enjoyed this video and we'd like to thank you for watching.